Welcome to the broadcast, my dear fruits. Did you see that quick costume change yesterday? With the Waleses? Prince William turned from Superman to Clark Kent. <laughs> and Catherine, Wonder Woman to Diana Prince. It was really amazing to see the contrast between the formal and the informal and how quick they were able to adapt and change for the day. Just wonderful. Did you know that? Did you know that Wonder Woman's civilian name is Diana Prince? And this was decades before Diana Princess of Wales came along. I think the official name of that character is Princess Diana of Themyscira. Princess Diana, yes. Wouldn't have thunk it, would you? But it's true. So we're going to take a glance at their visit to St David's later. But the bulk of this broadcast is going to be something a little bit different. Because after their majesties attended Kravikirk, our King Corsi Socks, for the memorial service to the Queen for their reflection. Of course, they were photographed with members of the royal family and some of those members that joined them and had been hanging out with them at Balmoral with the Chattos. The Chatto family, including the two boys, well, I call them boys, but they are grown men, the two boys, Samuel and Arthur. And I always receive comments about them whenever they are glancingly touched upon. Everybody wants to know who they are, Sam and Artie. Well, I've been reluctant to address that issue in the past because they are extended members of the royal family. They're not working royals. They're great nephews of the late Queen Elizabeth, you see. But they do appear in the line of succession and they have a modest public presence, some social media in the past. They've put quite a lot out there. So we can have a glance. We can have a glance. And I know that some of you will find it interesting to chat about their family. They're actually 24 years old and 27 years old. And it's surprising because the younger one looks like the elder one to my eye. Artie looks older, but it's actually Sam that is the elder of the two. They're very different characters. As we shall see, they are very different characters. And they are, of course, grandsons of the late Princess Margaret Rose and Tony Armstrong Jones, the first Lord Snowden. That name really appeals to me. I think if I could have any of those royal titles, I would be a Snowden. It conjures up all the imagery of Narnia. Perhaps it's my Ice Queen fantasy. Lady Snowden. And for today's purposes, we will focus on Lady Sarah and her family. Lady Sarah was Margaret and Tony's daughter. Their son, David Lindley, or I should say David Armstrong Jones II, Earl Snowden. And he's a furniture maker. A furniture maker. Quite a celebrated one, actually. And a chairman at Christie's the Auctioneers. Lady Sarah was the last royal born at a palace. She was born at Kensington Palace and she spent much of her childhood riding around the place. She was schooled at Francis Holland in Chelsea. That was a girl's school, but then together with her brother, she moved on to a school in Hampshire, Beedales, which is rather a special place actually. And back then, to be a Bedalian was very fashionable. It was an artistic environment. It was very bohemian. As we know, the late Margaret Rose had a love of some things bohemian, including some of her men, <laughs> or those that would attach themselves to that kind of fancy. Yeah, it was mixed borders, mixed borders in this rural location at Beedales. No uniform. And uh, the artistic experience was very much nurtured there. This is a side of the family that is about artistry, some romance, bohemia, and I've got friends with similar upbringings, some of great wealth, and it's almost as if they have this sort of presence as if they are rather touched, and I don't mean that in a derogatory way, but sort of touched by a form of romanticism, if you like. They live cinematically and almost as if they are on a parallel sort of plane. And I rather, sometimes I rather admire it. Sometimes 
I rather envy it. At other times, I think they've totally and utterly lost the plot. But they are able to lose themselves in a sort of reverie and a fantasy of this life on a different plane. The other side of the lollipop is the fuzzy side, though, and they can go plummeting. They can go plummeting to the depths of despair when their idea of romance doesn't live up to various ideals they've acquired. I'm not talk talking about the chatter specifically in this instance, just similar sort of characters that I've known. Sarah is 59 years old at this moment in time, and I believe she is 28th in line to the throne now. When she was born, I think she was around 8th in line. Now, she's slid all the way down to 28th, and I'm sure she's relieved of that, my dear. She is godmother to Henry of Wales. Yes, she is Prince Harry's godmother. She's also godmother to Lady Lou, our dear Lady Lou, and also Lady Rose Gilman, who is the daughter of the Gloucesters. Lady Sarah was bridesmaid to the king, as he is now, to the Prince of Wales as he was then, to Charles and Diana. That is when she came to public attention in 1981. And when I mentioned the other day that a favourite performer of mine had died, Astrid Gilberto, some of you told me in the comments that her face reminded you of Sarah. And it's true. It's very true. It's quite uncanny, actually. And it is a sweet expression that they have. She is pure sweetness. I call them the gatto. <laughs> the gatto chattos, because they're just so sweet. All of them, my dear. Very sweet. She studied at Camberwell. Cabwell School of Art, and then she also spent a couple of years in India, and India has been a huge influence on that family as well. It shows up a lot in their lives. And her father, Lord Snowden, was involved in many artistic pursuits, and one of those was as production photographer on various films. And in 1984, he worked on that historical drama, A Passage to India, and she accompanied over him over to India during that period. And actually, that particular drama was produced by John Braben, 7th Baron Braben, who was married to the daughter of the first Earl Mountbatten, Patsy. Dear Patsy, Patricia Natchbull, 2nd Countess Mountbatten of Burma. It was on the set of the movie Heat and Dust that Sarah was working as a wardrobe assistant. And uh, there happened to be a young actor working on that movie. And that was our Danny. That was Daniel Chateau from a theatrical family. His father, Tom Chateau, was a successful actor of some note. His mother, Rosie, was a theatrical agent. So he had it in his blood, this theatre, they both had this sense of theatre and artistic blood running through their veins. And there was chemistry, especially under the auspices of romantic chi uh, China. <laughs> India, my dear. This was a passage to India and it was a passage to the heart of Lady Sarah. <laughs> oh dear, River, stop it, stop it. He had studied English at Oxford and art at City and Guilds. Now remember, Sarah's parents, Princess Margaret Rose and Tony, separated when Sarah was 12 years old. They divorced when she was 14 years old, but it was a long drawn out, it had been a long, it had been going on for eons, my dear, a long drawn, drawn out and miserable affair it was, the whole thing. Thankfully, it did not turn Lady Sarah into some bitter, twisted character. And that really is to her credit, because she could have done, she could have done, she could have turned from this shy, sweet gâteau into a rueful blancmange. But that wasn't the way with her. And this is a testament to her character. It's also why her character was twinned rather curiously with the late Queen Elizabeth, because they both had that ability to see past any toxicity and to only see the good in people. And so what I'm trying to say is 
trying to say is that she escaped all of that misery, not unscathed, you know, deeply hurt, deeply wounded by what had gone on and seeing her parents' marriage fall apart like that. But it didn't affect her character, the goodness of her character, I should say. It only made her more compassionate and loving. She really is the real deal, just as the late Elizabeth was. And this is where their kinship was formed. So that was how Lady Sarah met her beau and was courted by Danny. His full name is Daniel Chateau St George Sproul, although he dropped the Sproul by deed poll. Got rid of that, my dear. And they married eventually in 1994. And by the way, I loved her wedding gown. It was by Jasper Conran, if I recall correctly. And it was crisp white. And uh, she was surrounded by blooms in a crisp, fresh, pink, gorgeous confection of raspberries and cream. But, you know, wonderful for my aesthetic. Zara was a bridesmaid. Zara was a bridesmaid. So they were both artistic, they remain very artistic, and they both work, <laughs> I should say work, you know, as the aristocratic do, my dear. They work as artists, and for my money, they are both good. I really enjoy their work, and I'm not simply saying that or paying that I wouldn't do that. I really do enjoy the feel of their work. I think they have talent. She's actually vice president of the Royal Drawing School. He is part of the faculty there. She's also vice president at the Royal Ballet because her mother had an association with the Royal Ballet as well. She paints under Sarah Armstrong Jones, not the Chateau name. And she exhibits at the Redfern, or at least she used to. Her favorite painting, in case you're curious, is the Baptism of Christ by Piero della Francesca. She draws inspiration from Italian landscapes and the hues and the colours, whereas he is inspired by the Sussex Downs, where they have a place. He loves poetry. He's very much inspired by peasant poetry, this kind of thing, my dear, and he shows at Long and Ryle. His favourite sequence of paintings is Giotto's Scriveni Chapel in Padua. He's very much a fan of all that early Renaissance stuff, but yeah, she has a home in Kensington and uh, spends a lot of time in the Sussex Downs in Midhurst, actually, because she was gifted a Georgian farmhouse by one of the Sainsbury clan, Simon Sainsbury, now deceased, of Sainsbury's. Now, I have many viewers from abroad. Sainsbury's is a huge brand here. It's a supermarket. I hate Sainsbury's. I've, I've always hated Sainsbury's. I would rather go to Lidl or Aldi or Morrison's anywhere other than Sainsbury's. I mean, my supermarkets of choice are Waitrose and m and But if push came to shove, I would rather go to some budget outlet than Sainsbury's because they don't provide good food for good value, I'm afraid, my dear compared to all the others. At least at Waitrose and Marks, you get what you pay for. And you get good quality and it goes. And actually, I find it to be cheaper. You can fill your bag uh, and walk away and it'll last you. If you fill a bag in Sainsbury's and walk away, you'll have rotten strawberries two days later and not much change left over in your pocket. I digress, my dear. It's just a bugbear of mine because it gets this reputation, as you know, somewhat beloved of the middle classes, I suppose you could say, is rather cherished here in the kingdom. I don't like it. I've never liked it, but you know, I'm sure Simon Sainsbury was lovely and he must have been lovely because he gifted. Oh, and I forgot to say he was the great grandson of John James Sainsbury, who originally opened a tiny little store, you know, hundreds of years ago, whenever it was my dear, tiny little store that's become the huge brand that it is today. And of course, he's worth a lot of longer. A lot of Wonga or, Wonga or was. He was a philanthropist. Actually, I've got to say he was an extremely generous man. And he, he did a lot of good and provided a lot of good with his great wealth. He left part, of, just one tiny part of his estate was a hundred million pounds worth of paintings that he left to the National Gallery and to the Tate. And we're talking about an exquisite collection here, my dear. He left that to the Tate and... 
he was godfather to Lady Sarah. Wasn't the late Margaret Rose shrewd in her decision? Because when she died, she wasn't really worth a great deal of money. And especially after the taxman, it wasn't a vast amount that was handed down. But when you pick godfathers, godparents like a Sainsbury, <laughs> especially if they're rather generous and they've got the odd farmhouse to dish out for free, you know, who needs these great these great mega bucks to pass down. There's other ways, aren't they? Well, I'm, I'm being a little bit naughty. Perhaps it wasn't only her choice because Tony had an association to Simon Sainsbury too. Simon Sainsbury was gay. He didn't have his own spawn to hand down <laughs> the inheritances and the powers and everything. He had a husband. He, would, he had a civil wedding in his final years to another gentleman. So he was like a sort of gay uncle figure, if you like, to Lady Sarah. And we know that Princess Margaret Rose loved the gays. So she used to hang out with him. I'll flash up a picture of her with him and another one of the Sainsbury's uh, some decades ago. But, uh, you know, they got on very well. They got on very well, but so did Tony. And Tony hid out at Eaton Terrace while he was courting Margaret Rose and while it was all under wraps and while no, they didn't want anyone finding out about things or knowing they were scurrying about. He stayed with Simon Sainsbury's brother. I think it was Simon Sainsbury's brother at Eaton Terrace. But it's all right for some, isn't it, my dear? It's all right for some. I mean, who, who needs to bother with work? You know, no wonder they're fanning about being artists and painting pictures all day, my dear. You know, when you're gifted the odd spare house the odd spare Georgian farmhouse pile by one of your godfathers. Uh, who needs to bother with all that kind of stuff? <laughs> anyway, Lady Sarah saw the Queen as a surrogate mother figure after her mother died, after, after Margaret died. And their closeness only intensified in the wake of that death. She is extremely lovely. She is a joy to be around. Lady Sarah is that kind of friend that improves you. You know, she improves one by being in her presence. Praises can't be sung highly enough about her or her character. And that is how she has produced two good and loving sons. The first son that came along is Sam. Full name Samuel David Benedict. He is 29th in line to the throne and is 27 years old. And he looks so much younger. I think he looks so much younger and younger than his brother. His star sign is Leo. He graduated with an MA in 2018 and he tried three months work in commercial art. And he was going to go down that sort of route, but he found the whole thing very uninspiring. So he packed it in, click sharp. And he set his sights on becoming a potter, which I think is a, a lovely profession to choose, to choose to try and become a master of ceramics or a humble potter. I think it's gorgeous. And I love the beauty of pottery, well-made, you know, the skill, the artisan apprenticeship required for it and the joy and beauty of clay pieces. He took up a six-week apprenticeship with the North Shore Pottery and he began that practice in ceramics. He joined the Royal Drawing School in 2019, not too long ago. He's very much inspired by landscapes as well, this sort of thing. Now, he also did a six-week stint in India. As I say, India is important to that family. They all take inspiration from it. He went there for six weeks with his bow of the time and they spent four weeks doing yoga teacher training now as I say it's all right for the privileged isn't it my dear he's got no he had no intention of ever becoming a yoga teacher but he wanted to intensify his practice so he took the qualification and the training for it anyway he did 200 hours of training in yoga and uh, he creates in clay when he's working, he creates functional and sculptural wood-fired ceramics from his home and studio in West Sussex. The girlfriend I mentioned that accompanied him to India was a vegan blogger. A vegan blogger by the name of Sophie Pipe. And 
I believe that they split up during lockdown. I don't think the relationship survived. She was one that promoted feminism, self-love, a meat-free diet and hairy pit. It's her right to promote feminism, my dear, but that's certainly not a promotion of femininity, is it, my lovers? Each to their own. Each to their own. Now, there were rumours when they attended the Sussex nuptials. There were rumours going about at the time. And I heard quite a lot of them, quite a few of them. I think I've even had accusations in the comments section. That they gave a cold shoulder to Meghan and a little bit to Harry during that time. You know, the impression that people wanted to conjure up was one of, you know, sort of entitled, privileged aristocrats, you know, young, snotty-nosed, Etonians, giving the new gal and the American a hard time. And I can remember some of these rumours flying about even before aspersions were cast by the Sussexes themselves. And, you know, it's very easy to paint off uh, these sort of people. It's very easy to paint them as stereotypes of a certain type of character. And people really couldn't be more wrong. And I actually looked back at social media Sammy's social media from that very day and this is what he said at the time the wedding yesterday was so full of love and warmth and joy I wish Meghan and Harry a lifetime of happiness and also want to share some of the sweet love I gathered up inside of me with all of you Art Chateau I love you bro I hate all that bro business don't you my I think it always sounds cringeworthy but particularly from the tongue of the upper crust. Don't do it, my dear. Anyway, uh, I love you, bro. And I'm not just saying that because you're so big, you could squish me. Love you. So I will leave you to draw what you are going to draw from that. But do you see anything there other than goodwill, wishes and love and actually making a point of doing that? Uh, good tidings. But yes, he said to his brother, you're so big, you could squish me. So that brings us on to the squishy one, who is bro number two. Artie. Yes, meet Artie. His full name, Arthur Robert Nathaniel Chatto, 24 years old. And he is 30th in line to the throne, an aquarium. It's young Arthur that was page of honour for his late great auntie, Queen Elizabeth II. And he attended Westminster Cathedral Choir School and, as I said, Eton College. I believe he read geography when he was at Edinburgh and perhaps art as well, history of art like his brother. He read geography and he also took on work as a personal trainer while he was studying, which is to be admired. He was specialising in strength and endurance with a military focus. And he is, or at least was, I'm not sure of his relationship status at the moment, but he was stepping out with Lizzie Friend, a gal by the name of Lizzie Friend. And he is, in contrast to his brother, he is an action man. He is a real man of physicality, Perhaps something of the exhibitionist about this young man, slightly extrovert, at times at least. He enjoys ice diving in Greenland. He enjoys climbing in the Alps. You can find him on mountain ranges. Endurance rowing, this sort of thing. Bulking up his frame. Did you know they're auditioning for the gladiators at the moment, my dear, on television? It's coming back for a new series, if it isn't already, my dear. They're auditioning for the gladiators, so get lining up. He is also a keen environmentalist and he is now serving with the Royal Marines. He was asked about the crown, which of course features his late grandmother as a stereotype of sorts. And he said, yes, I have watched it. I guess it's only an interpretation. So I just kind of remember what they're actually like and don't let the TV persona mar my judgment of any of them very wise. So I hope that sheds a little introductory light onto that wing of the family, as it were. You've seen them at Crathy Kirk this week and you'll see them again and again. And I think it's nice to focus on lesser known 
sort of extraneous members of the family here and there and I do so whenever I get the opportunity and whenever there's not too much going on with the, the senior core of royalty. So that was just a little introductory glance at them but I would also like to take a little glance at Catherine and of course at William, I shouldn't forget William should I, who as I said appeared looking more casual in contrast to their more formal look on accession day. She wore a wax parker in khaki by Troy London and she wore twist hoop earrings by Spells of Love. The trainers on her royal trotters were in white platine leather and they both visited loads of places round about St David's in Carrymore. A seaweed and mussel farm was one of those places. Don't chuck a bucket of water on her or she'll turn into a mermaid. And here they are looking at lifeboats with the RNLI. They met volunteers who saved lives off Pembrokeshire and the princess received a wonderful nosegay in blue and white. I really love those colours. Delicious, aren't they? At Carrie Moore, the Waleses took a peek at the first regenerative ocean farm and Edward's trophy, the delightful Sophie, was at Cornbury House. I've missed taking a peek at her over summer to see her easy breezy style and she wore it beautifully here at the International Horse Trials in Oxfordshire. The dress is by me and M, a cotton summer striped midi, and she wore espadrilles to the feet. The beige tote was by Sophie Habsburg Luisa, and the sunglasses Dolce and Gabbana. She frolicked around with friends including Mark Foster Brown, and Zara competed in the cross-country part of the competition. Those thighs were born to ride, weren't they, my dear? They were born to ride. They look fabulous in jodhpurs. Lucky Mike. And the horse she was riding was called Showtime. Showtime. Fabulous name, wasn't it? Actually, the horse she was riding the other day was called Classy Affair. Classy Affair. <laughs> I just love these, these horse names, don't you? Classy Affair. Wonderful. Well, you are a Classy Affair, and I thank you for spending a few idle moments with me. I enjoyed seeing you. Do come again. And if you enjoyed this segment, consider treating me to a cup of coffee or a slice of cake in my tip jar, which you can find in the description box below. If you didn't enjoy it, be off with you and don't darken my doorstep ever again, my dear. Ever again. <laughs> See you next time. Ta-ra, my dears. And toodle pip. <laughs>